please make it super loud. Riot if you will. Don't riot. Please don't throw this. Um, give it up. For Paul Clemente! So I didn't feel good this morning because I drank too much last night. And I'm Googling my symptoms <laughs> without paying attention. And I put in stomach ache, headache, diarrhea. <laughs> and I realized I was putting it not into Google. I was putting it into IMDb. <laughs> and it told me I was John Goodman. <laughs> That's a hard realization to come to. <laughs> so, did you guys ever get like really drunk and then look at your Google history <laughs> while you were drunk? Nobody. Only me. You're, you're in luck. Let me tell you. Last night, I drank too much, and I went through my Google history just to see just kind of where, does anyone know how to unlock my phone? <laughs> it is, it is, I am in a pickle right now. So last night, I got super drunk, and then the morning after, I looked at my Google history, and it says, wedding invitations, because I'm getting married. Woo! To that lady right there. Woo! Woo! Thank you, I did nothing to earn any of that. 
Then I googled wedding invitations contemporary because I'm a modern guy. <laughs> then I googled beer delivery. <laughs> then I googled beer delivery near me. <laughs> then beer delivery 14701. <laughs> Then I googled DUI in New York. <laughs> then DUI lawyer price. <laughs> DUI lawyer price cheap. <laughs> and then finally, before I fell asleep, I said, is Lenny Kravitz okay? <laughs> Because I was worried. <laughs> That's enough for the phone material. <laughs> so, I am so, so, so appreciative of you guys showing up tonight. Woo! We have 85 people here tonight. We are going up against Wits and Giggles at the Ice Arena. <laughs> Which is fantastic, because you guys chose, you guys made a conscious effort to come here and support local comedians. Woo! 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 Instead of some guy from Cleveland going, my wife farts. Because that's what it is. things about this area is white men's. You guys like white men's? Yeah. I remember my first white men's sub, like the first time I heard the Beatles. <laughs> it was outstanding. And another thing I really like about white men's, although they got rid of it recently, was W Kids. Woo! You could drop your kids off at Wegmans and shop in peace. And you go there, and they have gallons of disinfectant. <laughs> they have markers, every color of the rainbow. They had a documentary on the TV teaching them about Alaska. <laughs> That's a place you want your kids to be. It's better than at home, really. <laughs> so you have all this time. You go to Wegmans, you shop, you're not batting sugary cereals and gum and candy out of the, the cart. You're just, you have all this time. Did you know Wegmans has eight different kinds of honey mustard? <laughs> eight! I would never have known that if my kids were around. <laughs> so I shop, I get everything I need, I take every single last second I can in those aisles, make sure I have everything, and I come back, and the thing is, at W Kids, they used to ask you for your driver's license before you drop your kids off. And if you're really going to abandon your kids at a Wegmans, you don't care how legal the road to freedom really is. You're just going to go, the driver's license isn't going to stop anything at all. So it's time to pick up my kids. And I'm looking at them, and they're coloring a picture with other kids. And then it's beautiful. They're all working together in one picture. And I caught myself just kind of looking at them. I forgot. I forgot for one second how terrible children are. <laughs> and I'm looking at them, and I'm super proud. And I get caught up in this moment. And a lady behind me is looking, too. And I see her, and she looks at me, and she goes, well, which one's yours? 
go, well, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> It took me 30 minutes to get my children back <laughs> after speaking to two managers. <laughs> but I'm not mad at them. It was the right move. <laughs> Who here has children? <laughs> All the people are really, they're like... <sighs> I'm here, my children are being watched by a qualified adult. I don't want to be reminded. <laughs> you guys, you guys ought to lie to your kids for no reason. <laughs> Just for the fact that it's funny to you. I do this all the time. <laughs> Just constantly. Like, I used to tell my kids that the smoke detectors were cameras <laughs> in the house. I had to come clean to my son, I was like, my hot dogs aren't world famous. <laughs> I'm just trying to impress you. <laughs> you don't have a good eye for T-ball. <laughs> you just suck at T-ball. <laughs> I don't have an old knee injury from high school. I'm just tired of getting beat in street hockey. <laughs> Burger King isn't just for royalty. Anyone can go there. <laughs> I used to tell my kids, when they were terrible, we used to be outside, we used to be playing, having a good time. And they'd hear the ice cream truck. I lived in a neighborhood where there was still an ice cream truck. Yes, I'm doing pretty well for myself. <laughs> and they'd go, oh my god, it's the ice cream truck, can we get ice cream? They were good, they would get ice cream. If they were shitty, I would go, hold on. Let me listen. Sorry guys, that's the ambulance. <laughs> they are playing music for sick kids. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I used to tell my kids if they didn't go to sleep, the sun would not come up in the morning. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. But that's a lot of pressure for a kid. I just recently found that out. The entire planet's heat, energy, and light source would be dependent on whether they wanted to hear Goodnight Moon one more time. I would go to turn the light off, and he'd be like, Dad? And I'd just point at the window and be like, Dude, that's up to you. Can you even imagine that? Even as an adult? Like it'd be Paris, France at noon, and there'd be a guy outside a cafe smoking a cigarette, and he'd go, Sacre bleu, ça ne fait pas la guerre. He wouldn't speak English just for my joke. <laughs> Just a break. And when you have kids in their first year or so, what's probably one of the best things you can think of, of what kids do? This is your part. You can shout out anything. The joke's going to still go away. Cry is not, not an answer. <laughs> Within a year, what do you think one of the, the most miraculous things you can experience as a parent? Worst facts. No. Talk. Talk. <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> so when you get talks. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. <laughs> so when your kid talks, it's such a miraculous thing. Like, to your kid, you are the alpha and omega of everything. Everything. And you want them to talk. You're like, say dada, say mama, say this, say this. You want them to talk because you want to communicate with them. And that lasts what? Like a year? <laughs> My kid said dada because I am awesome. <laughs> But after a while, you can only pretend you're into Pokemon so much. <laughs> I used to tell my kids they had, from birth, 100 words to use for the entire day. <laughs> if they talked more than that, their tongue would fall out of their mouth. <laughs> and they were done. I never told them how long they were done. And they can't count to a hundred. <laughs> they can't. Like they would come in and be like, oh, <laughs> and then I would just go one, two, three, four. <laughs> and then okay, it's not that important. Or sometimes they would come in the room and be like, Dad, how many words do I have left? And I'd be like, seven less than you had when you came in this room. <laughs> about you zip <laughs> And that's what kids do. Kids test. Parents teach. That's kind of our job. And they constantly test and they constantly teach. And that's just this ever unending struggle of power between parents and children. Like, I never really had a chance because my parents were weird. <laughs> and they weren't like, let's have breakfast for dinner weird. They were like, raise a stand up comedian weird. <laughs> They raise someone that stands in front of a sold-out Studio Metro audience. <laughs> and asks everyone in the room, sincerely, you guys kick your cat out of the room before you masturbate? <laughs> or do you guys just develop the bond we just go at it? <laughs> I'll tell you something. I hit my final straw with my parents when I was 13. Because at 13, I was a man. <laughs> I had a paper route when I was 13. I was a paper boy. And once I hit 13, I was a paper man. <laughs> I was ready for anything life had in store for me. So I was in 13, I worked tirelessly to earn enough money to buy my own Super Nintendo. That's how old I am. And people would say, yeah, that's how old you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very unfortunate. I bought a Super Nintendo with my own money. This was a big deal. They were still $300 or whatever, and I earned every penny. I knocked on every door. I earned every penny of that Super Nintendo, and it made it awesome. It wasn't my brother's. It wasn't a Christmas present. It wasn't my sister's. It was mine. And it was great. When I first got it, the first thing I wanted to do was go to my friend's house and play Super Contra. I couldn't wait. And what was even a bigger deal was I got to take it to my friend's house because anything that was plugged into my father's house was a permanent <laughs> fixture of his home. Once it was plugged in, you couldn't take it anywhere. He'd want me to mess with the wires or monkey around. <laughs> 
So I got to take the Super Nintendo to my friend's house. I got to plug it into his bedroom. We got to play Super Contra. We got 30 lives because it's a Konami game. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know the Konami code? Yes. Yeah. Shout it out, guys. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Whoever says that is usually the people that need to go to bed very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Including myself. <laughs> so I got to bring Super Contra to my friend's house. I was having a great time for about 10 minutes. And my dad calls my friend's mom and says he needs to pick me up immediately. And she calls upstairs, and this is before cell phones. Okay, let's get over it. <laughs> and she goes, Paul, your dad's coming. I'm like, oh my god, why? What's wrong? What did I what what did I do? I have no idea. My dad's coming. And he Tokyo drifts inside. <laughs> of my friend's driveway in a minivan <laughs> I'm not mad at him for it <laughs> and he opens the door he had really long arms <laughs> I'm like okay and I sit down I'm like is everything okay? He says, nothing. And I'm like, does, some, does someone die? It is, that's where I go. Is, some, is, every, is everything fine? Does, does someone die? That's a really good actor. He says, nothing. I said, did I do something wrong? He says, nothing. I said, can I change the radio? He says, nothing. So I do nothing. <laughs> and we make it home. We get out of the van. And I walk up my front porch. And the second the door opens, he grabs me by my beautiful, thick, flowing mullet. <laughs> Gets a hold of me and drags me upstairs. And keep in mind, this is a place and a time where child abuse, it was green light. Everything, everything was good to go. There was no protection for me. And he throws me into my room. And I'm looking around and I'm like, what? What on earth could be the problem? And that's where I found a pen. A pen had fallen from my homework to the ground on the brand new carpet and somehow exploded. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not last time. And he goes, what is this? And he said, I, I don't know what happened. And he goes, this is ink all over the brand new carpet. <sighs> and I said, I, I, the only thing I could think of, my 13-year-old brain was just turning and turning and turning. And I was like, I, I can't control gravity <laughs> in this house <laughs> or anywhere. <laughs> And he goes, just clean it. And he leaves and he slams my door. And I'm 13. I'm a man. <laughs> I don't have problems for boy things or boy problems. I'm a man. I got things to do. I got Contra to play. <laughs> and so I try and just scrub it and it's just turning more blue and it's just garbage. And I got grounded for an indefinite 
period of time. Just, you're grounded forever. <laughs> I, I didn't know. You don't ask when you're grounded, like, how long? Uh, forever. <laughs> That's just how things work in this house. So I'm mad. I am mad. And I'm just going back and forth and just pacing, and I'm like, you can't do this to me. I am 13 years old, for God's sakes. And I am sick and tired. I can't control gravity wherever it is. And I don't even care. About I don't even know much about the cost. I don't even care because I am 13, and I have a paper route, and I bought a Super Nintendo, and I'm an adult now. And yeah. I saw a 13 year old sound, right, too? <laughs> And so, I'm mad and I'm pacing on the porch, and I see my dad below me on the back porch, and he's just toiling away in this tomato garden that he had. He was so proud of this tomato garden, he tilled it himself. This little block, it's about the size of that table. He was so proud of it, and he had this stupid fucking look on his face, and he was like, mm -hmm, I'm making tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> He's just tilling away in this tomato garden, and he is so happy. And then that's when I came up with a plan. <laughs> that's my plan face. <laughs> and so it was later that night, I made sure my parents were occupied. They were watching figure skating, which is really fucking weird. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with figure skating, but both of them liking figure skating? That's where you raise a comedian. Otherwise. <laughs> and I made sure they're unoccupied. And I went up on the back porch and I looked down at my dad's tomato garden. So I turn around, I unbuckle my belt, and I put my butt down, and I shit as hard as I can on my dad's tomato garden. And not only mentally, but physically, it felt fantastic. <laughs> and it sounded like, you know when you scare a dog on your kitchen floor, and it just kind of wants to get traction and it goes... <laughs> when I was done, I was like, yeah, Paul won. Dad won. <laughs> Distracting anyone? <laughs> I want you to focus up here. Not down here. That's for later. <laughs> and the next day I'm up in my room in her brain. And the next day. It rained. And the next day... It rained! Me is there. <laughs> it rained for three days. And I forgot about it. Because in a 13 year old's world, 24 hours, just better off being an eternity, right? <laughs> and I'm up in my room, playing Super Contra. <laughs> And I hear my dad all the way downstairs go, Oh my God! <laughs> what could that be about? <laughs> See? Oh. <laughs> I, oh my God, I forgot all about that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. There's, there's no way you can prove that it's me, can it? <laughs> Like he won't DNA test poop. <laughs> oh my god, he will DNA test poop. <laughs> this is terrible. And so 
so <coughs> playing it easy, I'm at the top of my stairs and I'm listening. And I hear the bottom door open. And he goes, oh my god! Look how good at growing tomatoes I am! <laughs> He called his mother, who was a hundred percent Italian, from Naples. Of, Ma, look up there! You should see these tomatoes. I am so good at growing tomatoes. He was happy, and he goes, "Well, I'm gonna make some tomato salad. We're gonna put some basil and some oil in it, and that's what we're gonna have for dinner." Luckily, I eat tomatoes. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I am 38 years old. Please pretend you're surprised. <laughs> you look so great. There have maybe been in my entire life like 10 perfect moments. <laughs> But the fact that I got to sit across the table from someone who recently annoyed me and literally watched them eat shit. Let me tell you how great that was. Guys,